Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel ML for Analytics. I am Jyoti Dikshit and today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic in Power BI. It's actually a feature that is uh, how to handle invalid relationships or you can say blank rows in Power BI. So uh, we will be uh, discussing it by means of our use case and by means of DAX expression. And uh, we will be using a uh, Contoso uh, database uh, in this particular video, in this particular case study. So first of all, let's cover uh, some theoretical aspects related to it and then we will be uh, covering all this, uh, how to tackle invalid relationships in Power BI uh, by means of demo. So let's get started. So first is case one. Uh, so this is an ideal case and we have uh, one fact sales table and other one is the dimension, uh, dimension product table. And uh, we have all the IDs which are there in fact sales table present in dimension product table. So generally what happens is, the, is that uh, this fact table, it generally contains the transactions. So here, uh, sometimes what happens is that uh, it's it's a good thing that we have all the product IDs uh, corresponding to uh, the SPAC sales present in dimension product, and we are having a uh, you can say many to one relationship between SPAC sales table and dimension product table. So that is that is a brilliant case as in. What Power BI engine does uh, in the back end is that whenever you are refreshing the tables and when uh, a relationship is established between pack sales and dimension product table, then uh, in the background table expansion takes place and uh, it actually does uh, left out a join uh, in the background. and the table expansion direction is generally from the many side to the one side so in this case when the expansion is going to happen uh, the the target of the expansion is going to be uh, the dimension product table and the source of the expansion is going to be fact sales tables why because it will be applying left left uh, out to join in the background and and uh, by, by the key for the key for the uh, left outer join is going to be this ID column. So in this case, uh, when uh, this join is going to be applied, if we are having matching IDs between these two tables, then no blank rows will be there, and everything is going to be just fine. But in real world, we often encounter this case, that is case two. And in this case, you can see that uh, though we have ID number one and two in the dimension product table, but three, ID number three, which is here in the fact sales table, the last row of the fact sales table is containing ID three and it is not there in the dimension product table. And in this case, what Power BI or you can say DAX does in backend is that to ensure referential integrity, it actually uh, adds a blank row uh, in the dimension product table. So when uh, table expansion is going to happen and uh, when uh, we get the uh, output after refresh, then this blank row is going to be there. So now let's understand this by means of a demo, uh, how we are going to do this. So uh, we will be covering this. Uh, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to eliminate all these measures over here. So, okay, cool. So uh, you can see that uh, I have Presently in this table, I have just one column, which is brand name, which is coming from dimension product. So fair enough, it's it's cool uh, till now. Now, I have created uh, a table uh, in which I am uh, having all my measures. 
and I have one measure over here which is a sales amount and it is actually the summation of a sales amount uh, column uh, which is lying in fact sales table. So I am going to add this. Before that I will go to fact sales table and uh, what I'll do is I'm going to add product key table in this column also. I'll put it over here and uh, the summarization which I'm going to select is uh, it is uh, count distinct. Cool enough. So we can uh, we can name is uh, name it like uh, uh, products sold. Cool. So till now this has been the case fair enough and uh, but next we are going to uh, do is we are going to add another measure which is average sales amount and the tax expression for, for, for this uh, measure is just average x. Uh, in this the first uh, in the first argument I am giving the table name which is the dimension product table and in the second expression uh, I am giving it uh, the name of the measure that is sales amount. I repeat sales amount is just iterating over the fact sales table and it is doing the summation of sales amount column which is lying in fact sales table. So cool. Uh, now what I am going to do is we can see that currently I have all these brand names over here and it is giving me the uh, sales amount and average sales amount corresponding to this brand name. Fair enough. Now what I will do is I will click on transform data and I will go to dim product that is dimension product. I will go to this color name table and let's just remove two colors from this dimension table. One is silver, so I'm going to remove it and the other one is blue. So again, I'm going to remove it. So now this dimension product table has removed all those rows of uh, the products, all those product IDs from this dimension product table, which were corresponding to blue or silver color. And I'm going to click on close and apply and it will take some time and oops so you can see that uh, in this particular table a blank row has been introduced so uh, what, what is being done in the back end is that uh, though we have removed uh, those uh, colors that is uh, gray and sorry silver and blue from dimension table but uh, and the product IDs corresponding to them is uh, is removed right now. But they are still there in fact sales table. They are still uh, the transaction for those two colors and for those IDs which are corresponding to silver or blue color. They are still there in fact sales table. And this has resulted in the addition of a blank row over here. So you can see that though the sales amount has, uh, it, though it has incorporated this thing and currently all those rows uh, which were corresponding to silver and blue, uh, they have been just pushed to just one, one blank row and uh, the, the summation of those uh, blank rows, uh, it is actually this particular value and this has been taken into consideration by sales amount measure which is a cool thing but but this has not been taken into consideration by average sales amount measure and how can we handle this so this dimension product table it is not having those those ids which which can correspond to uh, those ids uh, in sales uh, in fact sales table so to handle this i have a hack and that is this expression so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add 
another measure which is average sales amount values. In average sales, what I have done is I have written dimension product inside values. So what values function does is it 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 actually extracts all the unique uh, values inside the dimension product table. But but it is also going to uh, it is also going to contain uh, the blank rows so uh, unique rows actually plus it is also going to contain the blank row so uh, after this uh, when I actually uh, add this to my table you can see that it is actually giving me the same value as that of sales amount why is this happening it is because this what what is the uh, formula of average average is equal to sum sum of values divided by number of values currently though it's containing this sum in the numerator but in the denominator we are having just one why because the number of rows has been taken as one in this particular formula because all the blank rows are compressed into just one row and that is why we are having this formula so how to actually uh, what to do in this case uh, as in how we can um, solve this particular mystery so this formula is the answer to that what we are going to do is in the numerator we are just going to have the sales amount measure which is obviously the summation of the sales amount column for uh, for different for different filter context and in the in the de denominator we are having distinct count of of fact sales product key so uh, this but this is, we are in this case only considering the fact sale table in the denominator. And when we actually click on, uh, we, we are adding this in our table, oh, we, we get the correct answer in this particular case. So the, the formula of divide is, uh, the syntax of divide is actually divide then we have numerator as the first argument and denominator as the second argument so this has been taken into consideration one thing which i wanted to tell you is that we also have another measure in this particular tile in all colors so if you go over here this is the formula this is the tax formula for this all color i'm counting the rows of all of the color names which are there in dim product table so uh, in all i have just one column and i'm counting the rows for that which is currently 15 but it was not 15 originally so what we can do is we can uh, handle this we can go to dim product and we are going to delete these two steps and we are going to click on again close and apply and what you are going to see is presently we have 16 different colors in dim product table okay the, the, this is the correct number but when we again go to transform data and when we again go to dim product and when we again go to uh, this color name and we actually uh, remove the silver and we remove this blue also and we, and we are going to click on close and apply then 16 minus 2 is 14 but we have 15 over here why because after the removal of blue and silver one blank row has been added in dim product table so that is why we are getting 15 in this particular tab. So guys, with this, I conclude this video. In this video, we learned how to handle invalid relationship. I'm going to add the DAX, uh, DAX formula for all of these uh, measures in the description box below. 
and in my blog post also in uh, my blog ml4analytics.com so from there you can uh, have a look at all the measures and their formulas and you can try to implement this on your own i'm also going to add how to uh, how you can down how you can set up this Fontosa database in your own machine. So if you like, if you uh, think that our videos are adding uh, some benefit uh, to, and you are able to upskill, then please like, uh, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And stay tuned. Thank you.